Anyone doubting Chevrolet's ability to build a class competitive super mini needs to try this one, the second generation Aveo. Smartly styled and in diesel form, smart to run, it's a budget brand small car you actually might feel rather good about owning. Chevrolet has never offered us a truly class competitive super mini. But given that the brand has only been represented on these shores since 2004, maybe we can forgive it that. The Marks, uh, Matias and Spark City cars have attracted a reasonable following, but buyers looking for something a little larger and fiesta-sized had, until the end of 2011, uh, merely been offered a series of fairly lightly disguised variations on the old Dayu Kalos, and that's a design dating all the way back to 2003 which was fine for emerging Asian markets, not so good for more demanding Europeans. People who the company hopes will take this car, the second generation of Veo launched early in 2012, much more seriously. On paper, it certainly seems as if the designers, the engineers and the marketing people have ticked all the right boxes. There's a more distinctive look, a more efficient range of engines that at last includes some properly frugal diesel options and the usual emphasis on high spec and value pricing to enable this model to properly compete against uh, competitors from fellow budget brands like Skoda, Kia and Hyundai. And it's all supposed to be bound up in a product that promises to save you money without constantly reminding you of the fact. If that sounds appealing, then stay with me. We're gonna put these bold claims to the test. Now, if you're a typical Aveo buyer, then you probably won't care very much about what goes on under the bonnet or about how adept your car is likely to be in tackling your favorite twisty B road. In fact, you probably won't have a favorite twisty B road. So you won't care very much that there are no really performance-minded engines in the range, that the steering is a little light, or that there's a little more body roll than you'd find perhaps in something more Fiesta-like. Instead, you'll be more interested in things that have a lot more day-to-day -day relevance, like standards of ride and refinement that are, that are as good as just about anything else in the class, including super minis that are a lot more expensive than this one. Now partly that's because under the skin this car has a very solid taut chassis indeed, underpinnings originally developed for the fourth generation Vauxhall Corsa, but which this Chevrolet managed to get hold of first. When it comes to refinement, the only caveat I have to add concerns the 86 PS 1.2 litre petrol Aveo that most customers tend to choose. Now, though its performance figures rest to 60 in 13.6 seconds on the way to a top speed of 107 miles an hour, well, they seem all right. Um, just 115 newton meters of torque for this variant of pulling power means that you have to rev the car pretty hard to maintain reasonable progress. And that means that uh, it's a pretty stern test of the considerable efforts that its engineers have put in to keep noise levels down. Efforts that uh, stretch as far as special damping mats, uh, thicker windscreen glass, and even uh, a felt blanket lining the underside of the bonnet. Now the benefits of all this are far more noticeable if you choose the only other petrol engine that's available in the range, a 100 PS 1.4, especially if you mate it to the necessarily rather relaxed progress that's conditional if you order your car with a sprint sapping hydromatic automatic gearbox. Even if your Aveo comes with the slightly notchy five speed manual box that most models uh, must have, uh, the petrol 1.4 still isn't uh, much faster than a petrol 1.2 and it can't match the performance punch of even the least pokey of the two diesels on offer. Now this is the first time that Chevrolet has offered uh, a diesel in this class of car to British buyers. Both the units are 1.3 VCDI uh, power plants uh, and uh, you've got a choice of either 75 or 95 PS with the faster of the two managing rest to 60 in 12.6 uh, seconds. That's about a second and a half quicker than the lower powered unit. If you want to go faster in your Aveo diesel, then if you opt for the Eco version of the 95 PS model, uh, you'll reduce the uh, 0-60 sprint time to just 11.7 seconds. The compliant ride I mentioned earlier makes this a pleasant car to use around town, an environment where the light power steering comes into its own. 
you'll also appreciate here the tight turning circle of just 10.1 meters. That's less than three turns lock to lock. Now Chevrolet says it's a bit fed up with small cars being cute and cuddly. The intention instead with this model to create something bolder, more striking and with a dose of attitude. Hence the progressive raked body lines, the pronounced wheel arches and perhaps most notably the apparently motorcycle inspired theme that crops up all around the car. It's most obvious here at the front where the familiar bow tie badged split front grille is flanked by exposed round headlamps, twin tubes with high gloss bezels and chromed rings that do without the usual lens cover and certainly give the front of the car some character. It's a look carried forward to the tail lights too, not quite as successfully, though the curved rear hatch glass and integrated spoiler look smart and neat. Lift the tailgate and you're greeted by a 290 litre boot that's within spitting distance in size of a rival Ford Fiesta. And it's practically shaped, provided you can lift your items over the rather pronounced lip that sits above the bumper here. There are tie down hooks to keep wayward items in place. Uh, you've got an underfloor compartment for valuables. And if you're not using the rear parcel shelf, you can slot it in this channel behind the rear seats to keep it out of the way. Pushing forward the 6040 split folding rear seats reveals a class competitive 653 litres of fresh air. Though unfortunately, even if you uh, reposition the two stage height uh, boot floor, the area provided isn't quite flat. To take a seat in the back, you first need to locate the rear door pull handles, cleverly concealed in the upper section of the door, in a largely unsuccessful attempt to give this five door only design a coupe like profile. Once inside, you've got the usual super mini standard. Comfortable space with decent headroom for a couple of adults or three children, but three fully sized grown ups might find it a bit of a squash. Up front though, there are no issues in getting comfortable, not only because of the spacious cockpit, but also due to the smart three spoke reach and rake adjustable steering wheel and the height adjustable driver's seat that also gets a comfortable armrest if you're in a plusher model. And the center console's Vauxhall insignia sourced big buttons and clear controls are easy to use, but all of that you'd expect from a modern era super mini. What may come as more of a shock to this car's traditionally older client base is the design of the instrument cluster in front here. Again, it's motorcycle inspired with its uh, faux drilled casing, incorporating a round rev counter and a rather curiously elongated LCD digital speed readout. At least it's memorable. Less controversial and more immediately pleasing is the so-called dual cockpit look of the interior, apparently inspired by Chevrolet's iconic Corvette supercar with a wraparound design that flows neatly into the doors. It's certainly a very practical cabin with um, pull out drawers under the front seats, um, a little slot here for parking tickets or credit cards. Uh, then you've got a uh, two cup holders in the front and also an extra one for those at the rear and large storage bins for uh, things like mobile phones and CDs either side of the middle of the console here uh, to incorporate all that stuff that would normally rattle around while you drive. The electronic bits and pieces you may want to take with you might be better placed in the higher of the two glove boxes because there they can be charged up and you've also got a USB slot to connect through to the car's audio system. Now, though it's possible to pay as little as £10,000 for a Chevrolet Aveo, uh, list pricing suggests that most models will actually be sold in the 11 to 13 and a half thousand pound bracket that's common to super minis in the budget end of that sector, cars like Hyundai's i20 and Skoda's Fabia. It is possible to buy a Ford Fiesta with this kind of money too, but if you settle for one of those, you'll also have to settle for a much lower standard of spec. Kia's Rio is another budget brand super mini competing in this sector, but it costs a little more. And uh, Vauxhall's Corsa, well, 
even though it shares exactly the same engines as you'll find in this Aveo, well, that car costs a lot more, between £1,000 and £2,000 over the cost of this Chevrolet, depending on the variant that you're looking at. Pick of the Aveo range when it comes to list price, though, in terms of value, is probably the Enviro Conscious Eco diesel variant, which is priced to significantly undercut other green conscious variants of popular super minis. It's about a thousand pound less than, say, a Skoda Fabia Greenline 2, and around fifteen hundred pounds less than, say, a Ford Fiesta 1.6 TDCI Econetic or a Vauxhall Corsa uh, 1.3 CDTI 95 PS EcoFlex. But when it comes to the Aveo variant that most customers end up choosing, the petrol 1.2 is easily the most popular. It certainly seems a better bet than the thirstier, dirtier petrol 1.4 that comes only with plus trim or an automatic gearbox. Now, whichever Aveo model you choose, 1.2 or 1.4 litre petrol, or either of the 1.3 litre VCDI diesels, you should find your car to be decently equipped. Though for some unknown reason, the petrol 1.4 uh, does without the electric power steering setup that's fitted to every other variant in the range. It instead has a less advanced hydraulic system. Common kit items, uh, whichever Aveo you choose, include air conditioning, cruise control with a built-in speed limiter to uh, preserve your license, uh, remote central locking, um, then you've got a built-in rear spoiler, uh, an MP3 compatible CD stereo, power mirrors and electric front windows. Popular options that are fitted to plush, plusher models include rear parking sensors, um, alloy wheels and auto headlamps. Rather surprisingly, sat-nav isn't available even as an option. Safety-wise, there's plenty to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAT rating. There are single-stage airbags for both driver and front seat passenger, roof rail airbags and side impact bags, so a total of six in all. The roof has been designed to withstand four times this car's weight and there's a releasable pedal assembly to protect against lower extremity injury. Plus, at the rear of the car, uh, it's all been designed to protect the fuel tank in the event of a rear impact. Now, to prevent you having to put all of this stuff to the test, all the usual electronic driving aids make the team sheet. So you've got ESC stability control and an ABS anti-lock braking system made more effective by electronic brake force distribution and uh, a brake assist system to help you in emergency stops. As usual, when it comes to cost of ownership, the diesel option is by far the better way to go once you've swallowed the upfront purchase price premium. With the Surveyo though, the gulf between petrol and diesel is even wider than usual. Though owners of the petrol 1.2 can talk about a 60.1 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel figure, the reality is that since this model develops most of its power in the upper reaches of its rev range, um, you have to drive the thing therefore pretty hard to maintain purposeful progress. Um, I'd question whether that's actually really representative of what owners are likely to, to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis. It may actually be uh, the Pokia Petrol 1.4 that in real terms achieves uh, a better mileage figure. Uh, its quoted combined cycle figure is 53.3 miles to the gallon. 1.4 litre petrol Aveo buyers are the only ones who get the option of the brand's supposedly high-tech, high-dramatic six-speed auto gearbox, uh, a unit that seems to drain the 100 PS engine quite dramatically, uh, fuel consumption falling by 10 miles to the gallon, and CO2 returns uh, falling from 125 to 147 grams per kilometre, rather a lot for such a small car. Clearly, the Chevrolet engineers have placed their emphasis uh, for efficiency in other areas, partly with the petrol 1.2 that achieves a creditable 111 grams per kilometre of CO2, but mostly with the uh, two diesels on offer, both uh, the same 1.3 litre uh, units that you'll find in a Vauxhall Corsa, developing either 75 or 95 PS. The lower powered unit develops 74.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out uh, 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. But I think I'd be tempted to stretch a few hundred pounds more and go for the 95 PS version. Now, you can order this 95 PS diesel uh, either in standard form, 
uh, in which guys it's the only Aveo in the range to get a six speed manual gearbox or uh, you can opt for it in uh, green fingered eco guise. Now, uh, in eco form, your Aveo is capable of uh, returning up to 78.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and putting out just 95 grams per kilometer of CO2. These kinds of figures are aided by a surprisingly lengthy range from the 46 litre fuel tank uh, and are aided by uh, a very slippery 0.30 CD drag factor and a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in urban traffic or waiting at the lights. Peace of mind comes with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty and a year of roadside assistance. And insurance groupings range between groups five and ten on the one to fifty grouping scale. A budget brand Supermoney was once a last resort when you couldn't stretch to the safe conformity of a Fiesta, a Corsa, or a Polo. Now look at it cutting edge styling, the option of super frugal diesel power and a high-tech platform that in this case more expensive Vauxhalls can only copy. There is in short no doubt that with this second generation of Veo, Chevrolet has clearly upped its game. Now whether all this will be enough to catapult this car into contention with the established super mini class leaders is debatable but it's certainly good enough to stand this car in good stead against Chevrolet's targeted rivals in this segment, cars like Skoda's Fabia, Kia's Rio, and Hyundai's i20. Even if you don't like all of the characterful touches that do so much to set this model apart from its rather dull predecessor. True, you can buy greater quality, sharper handling, or even extra gadgetry from other rivals in this sector, but in every case, it'll cost you more usually much more. In contrast, the Surveo manages at an affordable price to offer more of what you really need in a car of this kind, with greater panache than any small Chevrolet before it. And for many potential buyers, that'll be all they need to know. <laughs>